Hi guys, welcome again. If I say depth of field, does it sound familiar to you? Great. So, what we are going to learn in this lesson is related to this, and it's about focus, both manual and auto. So, before taking a picture, please remember that when we use the focus, we are actually adjusting the distance. It is the area's dimensions of the element we want to make sharper. So, we notice that if we are working on an out mode, the camera won't let us shoot if we get closer to the objects. See what happens here. This is basically because auto mode is not that great if you want to do certain things or effects. In this case, if we are in a short distance, we won't be able to shoot. But wait, it reminds me that something similar happens when our hands get too close to our eyes. Can you see something? No, since my eyes cannot focus my hand. We can only focus it when our hand separates from the face. Check it out. If we stare at our hand, we cannot see the background clearly, say it's blurred. At the same time, the other way round. We stare at the background and the hand blurs. So, the same happens with the camera. After this example, understanding depth of field and focal distances isn't that tough, right? Thus, it's crucial not to ignore the distance since the closer we are, the bigger subfocus is. So, we'll be able to shoot in short distances if the manual mode is on, no matter how close we are. This, however, doesn't happen with the auto mode, as I've said before. Normally, when working with this mode, we are going to hear a beep or see a light in the viewfinder, depending on the camera. It's only after the beep that we'll be able to shoot. Remember, do not go over the minimum focal distance written in your lens. This one, for instance, indicates macro 0 0.25, so I can't work with a distance over 25. Obviously, this length is going to change with the focal distance. The angular length usually allows us to get closer. Let's try this out with 18 mm lens. As you can see, we can shoot until we move the camera to a further distance. Yeah? Can you see? Right. What happens if we zoom? Oops, we can't shoot neither. Can you see? So we need to keep in mind all this information about focus. It's very important. Let's learn now how to work with the focus. According to the camera we are working with, there are different options. One of them is using focus points. What does it mean? Well, depending on the camera, you'll find three focus points, nine, 11 focus points. It depends. So, take your camera and look for this option in it. In case you can't find it, check the user manual. Also, we are going to talk about the focus areas, which again, they are different in each camera. Some models use focus points, while others come with focus areas. Those using focus areas allow us to adjust the focus within different areas. For example, those on the right, those on the left, those in the middle. In the option to select the area offered by this camera, we can select all the points, which are 19, or just select the point that corresponds to the current position of the object. See? Only this point or all of them. We can also pick different areas. See? This one over here, the one of the right, has four points, or I can choose the one on the left, also four, or the section in the middle. That's up to you. 
These techniques are really useful to get the focus right and exactly where we need it to be. What happens if we use the default settings? Well, as it is the camera which establishes these parameters, if we use it, it could set the focus in a place that we don't want to. That's why it's way much better to use the option that allows us to place the focus point in the area we want. At least it's for me. Let's consider the example of a portrait with the camera in an upright position. Shoot. As the face is going to be in the upper part of the framing, we are going to select the focus area that best suits the area of the face. That's why I think that this tool is really useful. Another thing that can be done when taking a photo is modifying the focus points, right, left, up and down. There is also another possibility, which consists of working with the points in the middle and using a technique called focus lock and reframing. So, instead of going to the menu every time we want to change it, we can use this option. How does it work? It's pretty easy. Look at the object, okay? So, we just need to press slightly the shutter button and, without altering the distance, we move the camera sideways, like this, okay? Anyway, I think that it will be clearer after seeing this with a real example. In our cameras, we are going to find a button called AF, used to set this focus technique together with various options. What's the problem? The manual mode doesn't offer us any option. It's us who are going to move the zoom ring depending on what we are looking for. On the contrary, if we are using an automatic focus, the manufacturer may offer us different possibilities. In this Canon, there are three options, one shot, AF focus and AI survey, or the manufacturers use instead AFS, AFC and AFA. So, they use different names. We can also go to the user manual and check how it's called, so uh, we can find it in the camera. Go to autofocus mode and then see how they call it. So, what are these options used for? Basically, they only refer to the auto mode. Because guys, don't forget that with the manual focus, it's us who control the camera's possibilities. Although it can be a bit tiresome. It takes a lot of time to set up these parameters. So, in the auto mode, we are going to find various choices based on where what we are shooting. Is it a static element or is a moving one? For instance, the option one shot in Canon or AFS in Nikon indicates that what we are using is a simple and unique autofocus for static elements without motion, no motion at all. Let's use again the example of the hand. If we focus our hand and it remains static, while we are pressing the shutter button, the result will be OK. But if we move the hand while pressing it, we are going to get a blurry image. That's why there are other useful ways to take pictures of objects in movement. In Canon's cameras, we'll find the option AI Servo or AFC in Nikon, for example, which stands for continuous autofocus and help us to follow the object's motion. All this involves that we need to keep in mind that there is a focus for static elements and a focus for moving elements. Between these two tools, there are another one, AI Focus, an intermediate tool. It's a simple focus that shifts to continuous when motion is detected. Well, people tend to consider it as the best option, but I wouldn't say so, so it doesn't get the focus right very often. As a general rule, I recommend that you use simple focus. It is one shot. I think it's the best, because most of the time we'll be working with the static objects, so this mode is great. Only shift to continuous when working with motion, like shooting people walking or cars or whatever. 
Because in these cases, what we want to do is to follow the movement. Let's go now for a walk and make some practical exercises. But first, find out about your chemist features. Hi, now we are going to make an exercise to see how the automatic focus works. The first thing we need to consider is the minimum focal distance. Say, can I get too close to the object I want to shoot? We notice that if we place the camera at a short distance, the focus won't work. So, we need to move away gradually until we hear a beep or see a visual light, which indicates us that it's already focused. We also need to make sure that the AF sensor is activated and that we are not in a manual mode, because although manual mode lets us get very close and take a picture, the image we get will be blurred. So remember, that's very important, keeping the minimum focal distance. If we want to take a picture focusing on a certain detail, we need to get closer little by little and then move away until we get the focus point. Now we shoot and if we've kept the distance, the photo will be okay. Now I'm going to use an open diaphragm so that you understand the connection between focusing something at a short length and the background. Now I'm going to set the diaphragm at 5, which is the maximum allowed by this lens. And then I'm going to try to focus the tree and get a blurred black background. What I'm going to do is moving the tree to one side instead of placing it in the middle, so that we can play around with the focus points in the camera. See, we are moving the different focus points. There is also another technique which I found really, really useful. I don't know if you recall it, it's called AF log. And it consists of pressing the shutter button and then set the focal distance and move left to right. Do you see how I'm doing it? Right. The aim is to manage to focus the tree situated on the side and to get a broad background. To do this, as I said, we can try out with focus points or with AF lock technique, as you prefer. That's up to you. In the last place, we are going to practice how to use the different autofocus modes. Don't know if you remember it, but if we press AF autofocus, we'll find one shot, AI focus, and AI servo. So, one shot is for simple images, and then we have AI focus, an intermediate mode, and then AI servo, which is a continuous mode. Let's try out with one shot and AI servo. What happens if we focus with one shot? Remember that it's a simple autofocus used for static elements. If we move when shooting with this mode, we'll realize that as we are moving, the distance that we set before is modified, so the image isn't sharp, especially at short distances. So, in order to reflect motion on the image, we better use AI Servo or AFC. Please, check the name your cameras use to call them. So now, if I move, it won't affect the image, since the camera estimates the distance. Can you spot the difference? My recommendation for this exercise is to use first an open diaphragm, second a long focal length, and third a closer position to the object. By doing this, we'll see clearer the blur defects. Bring to mind what we learned in the lesson on depth of field. Now, let's put it into practice. The AF lock technique only works on the one-shot mode, which is the simple one, remember? So, make sure that this one is activated and not the continuous one, because if the continuous AF is activated, we'll see that although we press the shutter button lightly and move sideways, the focus will go to a further point, because of the motion, obviously. So it won't work. 
So don't forget it. Use simple autofocus for static objects.